we've started to lose our topsoil and now we've lost half of our topsoil. I'm joined by microbiologist Octavia Hopwood to explain how one of the reasons we've lost that is erosion and you've brought this lovely experiment here to explain how this works. So talk me through it. So as a species we are hugely reliant on the soil and, and everything that it provides uh, and we're currently managing it in a way that is it's not sustainable um, and we're, we're leaving vast swathes of land completely bare, we're taking the vegetation from it and because of that uh, we leave it susceptible to then erosion by water and wind. Mm. Water being a really key one especially because it rains so much here. Um, so we're going to simulate some rainfall here. Octavia's got the bare patch there, I've got a lovely grassy wild patch here and we're going to just give it a really liberal dousing. Octavia you built this didn't you and with the help of your dad so thanks Octavia's dad we're going to catch some of that runoff and see <laughs> catch the runoff from there because it hasn't quite come through but if you hold this next to each other right there I mean it's really clear to see this is actually almost completely clear and there's loads of sediment in that. Now that's precious stuff isn't it? What are we losing there? Yeah so it's just it's why that's blocked up actually it's yeah. because this is just full of mineral particles and that'll include nutrients, it'll include organic matter um, and also microbes and if you think that this is happening um, across the country and, and, and every time that it rains which of course in this country is quite a lot um, you can see that this is why topsoil erosion is a massive problem. Yes, I mean this is incredible, this is so clear here. Now you can imagine the, the roots here are like helping to hold the structure together but there's a lot more going on isn't there? Yeah, so bacteria and fungi which exist within healthy soil, they produce this kind of bio slime and it's the bio slime that it physically binds soil particles together, sticks them together to form these larger aggregates and they are much harder to wash away via the rain. It means that uh, topsoil erosion um, is less in a system with bacteria. So I mean it's a really I mean it's a busy busy world down there. It really is a complex community. In fact, 25% of the world's biodiversity is in the soil. And this is a lovely illustration of that complexity. It's a soil food web and there are things that we recognize here, the insects, there's the worms, but also the microbes and each of these have their place. So one of the other things that disrupts soil structure is digging. And how does that disrupt these communities? So every time you dig the soil, you are turning over the soil and, and each one of these organisms has its own specific niche within that soil structure. Um, so you're taking microbes that want to live closer to the surface, you're taking them down mm -hmm. and you're taking microbes that want to live further down to the surface and it means that there's this big disruption in, in the relationships between those species and it has knock-on effects throughout the system. And the system is, you know, this, this food web and at the heart of it, underpinning it all, are the microscopic creatures, the microbes. So let's take a closer look at these because there's billions, literally billions of them in one teaspoon. There's a billion organisms, is that right? Yeah. yeah so we've got one of the many billions of organisms. There's a nematode worm on the screen here. Now this is usually the sort of thing people don't like showing up in their gardens, but there are many species that are beneficial, aren't there? Yeah, so nematodes have received bad press in the past from mm. plant growers because they do cause damage but the majority of nematodes are actually very beneficial to the soil and contribute a wealth of, of really beneficial properties and they're indicator species so it means that if you've got nematodes within your soil system it generally means that the soil food web is is intact and isn't healthy. So this is a good sign if these show up there it's healthy soil indicator. Yeah really good sign. Yeah. So when you've got these healthy soils you've got things like the worms, the insects, they help to d d break things down to turn over the soil and they in turn will feed things that we love to see in our countryside, the wildlife, the birds, the mammals and of course we mustn't forget ourselves in that because we are part of the system aren't we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Absolutely. So for people watching at home how can they start to have healthier soils in their gardens? Yeah, there, there's loads of different ways. The first thing is keeping vegetation in the soil because that's providing the home for these microbial communities. And then if you, if you have patches of bare soil that you can't get plants in, um, provide a really good layer of organic matter on the surface of the soil and this gets carbon into the soil um, and from that you'll, you'll get this really fertile soil that then goes to produce really healthy plants. It sounds lovely. So it really is as simple as that. Look after your soil communities and they'll look after you. Back to Chris and Michaela.